All right, so uh, one thing, one, one new concept that we use in this module is the concept of clients, and this is a really tied to the auth specification. Uh, for every application that's talking to your Drupal installation, you will need to create a client entity. And uh, that is because uh, then you can uh, funnel every, every access request or every authentication request through the, the rules that you define for that client. And uh, imagine how you get this in, in Facebook or in GitHub, etc. Like, uh, when, or for Twitter, uh, when you write an app that uses Twitter's in information, you need to go into the Twitter developer side and create that app or sign up for that app. So this is the same concept here. So for the first example, we're going to create um, a very simple uh, client um, client entity because it will not need to get uh, most of the stuff populated. We will only need a client label and a client secret, a password that we will decide. So uh, I'm going to click Add Client and this is going to be used for the password grant um, and uh, the password grant is a first party grant and it, uh, it has the credentials of a user. So uh, we're going to say here, um, maybe uh, we say that this is for an iOS development that we are doing in-house to access the Drupal data that we have in, in here or uh, yeah. Uh, and since that and since that iOS app uh, is going to be about Drupal development, uh, we're going to call it Drupal Dev iOS. And we don't need anything, and this gets pre-populated by Chrome, and it's rather annoying. But um, but yeah, just delete that. Uh, here in New Secret, uh, you need to specify the password of the of this client for. Uh, Drupal will never store your password, it will only store a hash. So whenever you send your password again uh, to check against whatever you have in Drupal, uh, you will only be checking the hashes of it. So I'm going to type abc123 here. And uh, just, just to reiterate, uh, we're not saving any password. That means that if you forget the password, Drupal only has a hash. And from that hash, it's not possible to retrieve your original password. So uh, just don't forget about ABC123. Um, and we're not going to change anything else. We're going to talk about uh, most of this stuff in later videos. So I'm going to just click Save. And once we have that, we will have this, um, right, the UUID, which is uh, going to become our client ID. Um, that's perfect. Um, so once we have the client, we can just go ahead and make the request for our first um, for our first grant. So let me close this and uh, uh, let me show you what you need to do. So uh, for the password grant, uh, and I have a, an example here. For the password grant, uh, what you need is, and this is in the documentation for the library that they sent you, uh, you need to send the grant type set to password, the client ID set to the actual client ID, which is, in this case, this. Then the client secret is abc123, and then uh, we have admin, admin, and I'm going to remove the scopes for now. Uh, this is the username and password. So um, I have another user uh, which is called test. And you will see here, yeah, the test user, which is ID uh, 1707. Uh, username is test, password is test. Uh, please use real passwords, uh, but for this example, it's, it's just okay. So I'm going to click send, and this hopefully will return um, a token and a refresh token. 
so yep that's fantastic see that uh, it got our expiration time right and I'm gonna just copy this whole thing and I'm gonna head off to a debug route that uh, the simple auth module comes with uh, this will allow you to pass in a token and use that to authenticate the user and then print some information about the user that you just authenticated so uh, the route is under auth debug and you need to specify format.json sorry format equals json um, the only thing missing here is that uh, we need to add the authorization but uh, let me show you what happens when you don't send any authorization uh, it will just uh, return the information for the anonymous user you see that there is no uh, token passed in and the anonymous the, the user zero is detected and this is the anonymous user and you get here the uh, the the permissions for the anonymous user. So I'm gonna just authenticate this request, and we do this by sending a header that says authorization, and then that's the header name, and then the header value is bearer space, and then the token. As you can see here, the token type is bearer, and then this is the token value. That's how we get. The value here so I'm gonna click send and hopefully this will authenticate using 1707 and gives us a token and it authenticates uh, using 1707 uh, so that's fantastic um, next on we're gonna talk about scopes uh, in our next video thank you